2 Chronicles chapter 27 Jotham rules in Judah. Jotham was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. His mother was Jerus Jerusa, the daughter of Zadok. Jotham did what he what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. He did everything his father Uzziah had done, except that John Jotham did not sin by entering the temple of the Lord, but the people continued in their corrupt ways. Jotham rebuilt the upper gate of the temple of the Lord. He also did an expensive rebuilding on the way at the hill of Ophel. He built towns in the hill country of Judah and constructed fortresses and towers in the wooded areas. Jotham went to war against the Ammonites and conquered them. Over the next three years, he received from them an annual tribute of 7,500 pounds of silver 50,000 bushels of wheat, and 50,000 bushels, bushels of barley. King Jotham became powerful because he was careful to live in obedience to the Lord his God. The rest of the events of Jotham's reign, including all of his wars and other activities, are recorded in the Book of Kings of Israel and Judah. He was 25 years old when he became king and reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. When Jotham died, he was buried in the city of David, and his son as became the next king. Second Chronicles chapter 28 Ahaz was 20 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. He did not do what was pleasing in the sight of the Lord as his ancestor David had done. Instead, he followed the examples of the kings of Israel. He cast metal images for the worship of Baal. He offered sacrifices in the valley of Ben-Hinnom, even sacrificing his own sons in the fire. In this way, he followed the detestable practices of the pagan nations the Lord had driven from the land ahead of the Israelites. He offered sacrifices and burned incense at the pagan shrines and on the hills and under every green tree. Because of all this, the Lord his God allowed the king of Aram to defeat Ahaz and to exile large numbers of his people to Damascus. The armies of the king of Israel also defeated Ahaz and inflicted many casualties on his army. In a single day, Pekah, son of Ramalia, Israel's king, killed 120,000 of Judah's troops, all of them experienced warriors because they had abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors. Then Zikri, a warrior from Ephraim, killed Messiah, the king's son, Azrakam, the king's, pal king's palace commander, and Elkanah, the king's second in command. The armies of Israel captured 200,000 women and children from Judah and seized tremendous amounts of plunder which they took back to Samaria. But a prophet of the Lord named Oded was in Samaria when the army of Israel returned home. He went out to meet them and said, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, was angry with Judah and let you defeat them. But you have gone too far, killing them without mercy, and all heaven is disturbed. And now you are planning to make slaves of these people from Judah and Jerusalem? What about your own sins against the Lord your God? Listen to me and return these prisoners you have taken, for they are your own relatives. Watch out, because the Lord's fierce anger has been turned against you. Then some of the leaders of Israel, Azariah son of Jehonan, Berechiah son of Meshilamoth, Jehazekah son of Chaya, son of Shalom, and Amasa son of Hadlai, agreed with this and confronted the men returning from battle. You must not bring the prisoners here, they declared. We cannot afford to add to our sins and guilt. Our guilt is already great, and the Lord's fierce anger is already turned against Israel. So the warriors released the prisoners and handed over the plunder in the sight of the leaders and all the people. Then the four men just mentioned by name came forward and distributed clothes from the plunder to the prisoners who were naked. They provided clothing and sandals to wear, gave them enough food and drink, and dressed their wounds with olive oil. They put those who were weak on donkeys and took all the prisoners back to their own people in Jericho, the city of Palms. Then they returned to Samaria. 
At that time King Ahaz of Judah asked the king of Assyria for help. The armies of Eden had again invaded Judah and taken captives, and the Philistines had raided towns located in the foothills of Judah and in the Negev of Judah. They were already captured and they had already captured and occupied Beth Shemesh, Ahijalon, Gedaruth, so Soko, and its villages, Timna and its villages, and Gizma, Gimza with its villages. The Lord was humbling Judah because of the king of Ahaz of Judah, for he had encouraged his people to sin and had been utterly unfaithful to the Lord. So when King Tiglath Pileser of Assyria arrived, he attacked Ahaz instead of helping him. Ahaz took valuable items from the Lord's temple, the royal palace, and the homes of his officials and gave them to the king of Assyria as tribute. But this did not help him. Even during this time of trouble, King Ahaz continued to reject the Lord. He offered sacrifices to the gods of Damascus who had defeated him. For he said, since these gods helped the kings of Aram, they will help me too if I sacrifice to them. But instead they led to his ruin and the ruin of all Judah. The king took the various articles from the temple of God and broke them into pieces. He shut the doors of the Lord's temple so that no one could worship there. And he set up altars to pagan gods in every corner of Jerusalem. He made pagan shrines in all the towns of Judah for offering sacrifices to other gods. In this way he aroused the anger of the Lord, the God of his ancestors. The rest of the events of Ahaz's reign and everything he did from beginning to end are recorded in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. When Ahaz died, he was buried in Jerusalem, but not in the royal cemetery of the kings of Judah. Then his son Hezekiah became the next king. Second Chronicles chapter 29 Hezekiah was 25 years old when he became king in Judah, and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, just as his ancestor David had done. In the first month of the first year of his reign, Hezekiah reopened the doors of the temple of the Lord and repaired them. He summoned the priests and the Levites to meet him at the courtyard east of the temple. He said to them, Listen to me, you Levites, purify yourselves and purify the temple of the Lord, the God of your ancestors. Remove all the defiled things from the sanctuary. Our ancestors were unfaithful and did what was evil in the sight of the Lord our God. They abandoned the Lord in his dwelling place. They turned their backs on him. They also shut the doors of the temple's entry room, and they snuffed out the lamps. They stopped burning incense and presenting burnt offerings at the sanctuary of the God of Israel, as you can see with your own eyes. Because of this, our fathers have been killed in battle, and our sons and daughters and wives have been captured. But now I will make a covenant with the Lord, the God of Israel, so that his fierce anger will turn away from us. My sons, do not neglect your duties any longer. The Lord has chosen you to stand in his presence, to minister to him, and to lead the people in worship and present offerings to him. Then the Levites got right to work. From the clan of Kohath, Mahatha, son of Amasiah, and Joel, son of Azariah. From the clan of Moriah, Kish, son of Abdi, and Azariah, son of Jehalel. From the clan of Gershom, Joel, son of Zimna, Zimma, and Eden, son of Joah. From the clan of Elsapan, Shimri, and Zeel. From the clan of Asaph, Zechariah, and Mataniah. From the family of Heman, Jehiel, and Shemaiah. From the family of Jeduthun, Shemamiah, and Uziel. These men called together their fellow Levites, and they all purified themselves. They began to cleanse the temple of the Lord just as the king had commanded. They were careful to follow all of the Lord's instructions in their work. The priests went into the sanctuary of the temple of the Lord to cleanse it, and they took out to the temple courtyard all the defiled things they found. 
From there, the Levites carted it all out to the Kidron Valley. They began the work in early spring, on the first day of the new year, and in eight days they had reached the entry room of the Lord's temple. Then they purified the temple of the Lord itself, which took another eight days. So the entire task was completed in sixteen days. Then the Levites went to King Hezekiah and gave him this report. We have cleansed the entire temple of the Lord, the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the table of the bread of the presence with all its utensils. We have also recovered all the items discarded by King Ahaz when he was unfaithful and closed the temple. They are now in front of the altar of the Lord, purified and ready to use. Early the next morning, King Hezekiah gathered the city officials and went to the temple of the Lord. They brought seven bulls, seven rams, and seven male lambs as a burnt offering, together with seven male goats as a sin offering for the kingdom, for the temple, and for Judah. The king commanded the priests who were descendants of Aaron to sacrifice the animals on the altar of the Lord. So they killed the bulls, and the priests took the blood and sprinkled it on the altar. Next they killed the rams and sprinkled their blood on the altar. And finally they did the same with the male lambs. The male goats for the sin offering were then brought before the king and the assembly of people, who laid their hands on them. The priests then killed the goats as a sin offering and sprinkled their blood on the altar to make atonement for the sins of all Israel. The king had specifically commanded that this burnt offering and sin offering should be made for all Israel. King Hezekiah then stationed the Levites at the temple of the Lord with cymbals, lyres, and harps. He obeyed all the commands that the Lord had given to King David through Gad, the king's seer, and the prophet Nathan. The Levites then took their positions around the temple with the instruments of David, and the priests took their positions with the trumpets. Then Hezekiah ordered that the burnt offering be placed on the altar. As the burnt offering was presented, songs of praise to the Lord were begun, accompanied by the trumpets and other instruments of David, the former king of Israel. The entire assembly worshipped the Lord as the singers sang and the trumpets blew until all the burnt offerings were finished. Then the king and everyone with him bowed down in worship. King Hezekiah and the officials ordered the Levites to praise the Lord with the psalms written by David and by Asaph the seer. So they offered joyous praise and bowed down in worship. Then Hezekiah declared, Now that you have consecrated yourselves to the Lord, bring your sacrifices and thanksgiving offerings to the temple of the Lord. So the people brought their sacrifices and thanksgiving offerings, and all whose hearts were willing brought burnt offerings too. The people brought to the Lord seventy bulls, a hundred rams, and two hundred male lambs for burnt offerings. They also brought six hundred cattle and three thousand sheep and goats for sacred offerings. But there were too too few priests to prepare all the burnt offerings. So their relatives, the Levites, helped them until the work was finished and more priests had been purified. For the Levites had been more conscientious about purifying themselves than the priests had been. There was an abundance of burnt offerings along with the usual liquid offerings and a great deal of fat from the many peace offerings. So the temple of the Lord was restored to service, and Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced because of what God had done for the people, for everything had been accomplished so quickly. Second Chronicles chapter 30 King Hezekiah now sent word to all Israel and Judah, and he wrote letters of invitation to the people of Ephraim and Manasseh. He asked everyone to come to the temple of the Lord at Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover of the Lord, the God of Israel. The king, his officials, and all the community of Jerusalem decided to celebrate Passover a month later than usual. They were unable to celebrate it at the prescribed time because not enough priests could be purified by then, and the people had not yet assembled at Jerusalem. This plan for keeping the Passover seemed right to the king and all the people. 
So they sent a proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba in the south to Dan in the north, inviting everyone to come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover of the Lord, the God of Israel. The people had not been celebrating it in great numbers as required in the law. At the king's command, runners were sent throughout Israel and Judah. They carried letters that said, O people of Israel, return to the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, so that he will return to the few of us who have survived the conquest of the Assyrian kings. Do not be like your ancestors and relatives who abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and became an object of derision, as you yourselves can see. Do not be stubborn as they were, but submit yourselves to the Lord. Come to his temple, which he has set apart as holy forever. Worship the Lord your God, so that his fierce anger will turn away from you. For if you return to the Lord, your relatives and your children will be treated mercifully by their captors, and they will be able to return to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful. If you return to him, he will not continue to turn his face from you. The runners went from town to town throughout Ephraim and Manasseh and as far as the territory of Zebulun. But most of the people just laughed at the runners and made fun of them. However, some people from Asher, Manasseh, and Zebulun humbled themselves and went to Jerusalem. At the same time, God's hand was on the people in the land of Judah, giving them all one heart to obey the orders of the king and his officials, who were following the word of the Lord. So a huge crowd assembled at Jerusalem in mid-spring to celebrate the festival of unleavened bread. They set to work and removed the pagan altars from Jerusalem. They took away all the incense altars and threw them into the Kidron Valley. On the fourteenth day of the second month, one month later than usual, the people slaughtered the Passover lamb. This shamed the priests and the Levites, so they purified themselves and brought burnt, brought burnt offerings to the temple of the Lord. Then they took their places at the temple as prescribed in the law of Moses, the man of God. The Levites brought the sacrificial blood to the priests, who then sprinkled it on the altar. Since many of the people had not purified themselves, the Levites had to slaughter their Passover lamb for them to set them apart for the Lord. Most of those who came from Ephraim, Manasseh, and Issachar, and Zebulun had not purified themselves, but Hezekiah prayed for them, and they were allowed to eat the Passover meal anyway, even though this was contrary to the requirements of the law. For Hezekiah said, May the Lord who is good pardon those who decide to follow the Lord, the God of their ancestors, even though they were not properly cleansed for the ceremony. And the Lord listened to Hezekiah's prayer and healed the people. So the people of Israel who were present in Jerusalem joyously celebrated the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. Each day the Levites and priests sang to the Lord accompanied by loud instruments. Hezekiah encouraged all the Levites regarding the skill they displayed as they served the Lord. The celebration continued for seven days. Peace offerings were sacrificed, and the people gave thanks to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. The entire assembly then decided to continue the festival another seven days, so they celebrated joyfully for another week. King Hezekiah gave the people 1,000 bulls and 7,000 sheep and goats for offerings, and the officials donated 1,000 bulls and 10,000 sheep and goats. Meanwhile, many more priests purified themselves. The entire assembly of Judah rejoiced, inc rejoiced, including the priests, the Levites, and all who came from the land of Israel, the foreigners who came to the festival, and all those who lived in Judah. There was great joy in the city, for Jerusalem had not seen a celebration like this one since the days of Solomon, King David's son. Then the priest and the Levites stood and blessed the people, and God heard their prayer from his holy dwelling in heaven.